living in me The mystery of the gospel is Christ in me, Christ in me The mystery of the gospel is Christ in me Church, from past three weeks, we have been studying on serving the beautiful example that we looked into, our Lord Jesus. Though he was equal to God, yet he did not consider himself equal, yet took the form of a servant, becoming obedient to the point of death on the cross. Amen. What a beautiful example of servanthood attitude and servanthood leadership that Jesus has set to every one of us to follow. We saw the meaning of bond slave and why all the apostles such as Paul, Peter, James, Jude, John were willingly wanting and called themselves to be a bond slave of Jesus Christ. Amen. Following in the footsteps of Jesus. We discussed last week what is serving. Let's move on today to understand the benefits of serving. Yes, church. Today we will study on benefits of serving God. As you all know, God is no debtor to any man. We can never outgive God. God is always at upper hand. Amen. God gave us the very best of heaven. God gave us his son, Jesus Christ. Along with him, he has given us all spiritual blessings. If you have the son, you have everything. Amen. Glory to God. So God has given us so much that we could explain, that we can understand, that we can ever know or comprehend. So much God has done. Amen. And what God is doing in and through our lives. So when we say that we want to serve God, it is just a heart of gratitude towards what he has done to every one of us. Amen. The benefits of serving. When I see the Bible, throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, every individual, whoever has served, whoever has given their time, they have given their talents, they have given their money, they have given whatever belongs to them, whenever they have given, I see that God has written them back with much, much greater blessing. Let's take the example of Mother Mary. When God chose her to give birth to the Son of God, when God chose her as a virgin birth, she brought forth the Son of God. What happened? God blessed her life much more, honored her much more, and she was blessed with many more children thereafter, and her virginity was not altered. God blessed her. To this day we see that her name is known by so many denominations and so many people. So God gave her much more than what she gave to God. We saw Joseph of Arimathea when he came and said, I would like to give my grave to Jesus because there was no place to bury him. What did Jesus do? As usual, he gave it back unused. Amen. He didn't use his grave. He came out resurrected. Glory to God. He was resurrected. And Jesus gave back that to Joseph of Arimathea. And today, till this date, in Israel, it is considered as the most significant tourist spot in the world. Every year after year, pilgrims go there to see the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. Whatever you give in his hands, he always multiplies it and gives it back. Just like that little boy who came and gave 
two fishes and five loaves of bread that little that he had in his hand that little that he was willing to serve god willing to serve the people of god when he gave it in the hands of jesus it multiplied and 12 baskets were left over and the boy was blessed wow what amazing god we serve i want to take you to the story in the book of genesis the portion where jacob gives the blessing to all his children when jacob distributes the blessing to reuben simeon levi judah or all, all the other sons we see that when it came to levi levi was the tribe that would be ministering in the temple that would be ministering in the tabernacle so the levi tribe had the blessings in connection to the service that they would be doing in the house of the lord in the book of deuteronomy when they came out of egypt this tribe of levi when they came out of egypt the portions were divided the portion of the land let me give you a brief story what is the portion what is the blessing so you will understand what i am trying to say god had promised abraham and his descendants that he would be giving them the land the promised land god said abraham i will bless you i'll make your name great i'll make your descendants numerous and god had made covenant of increase with abraham so that blessing that promise abraham's descendants were holding on to when they were in egypt when they were made slaves after the death of joseph that is the grandson of abraham when they were slaves yet they were holding on to that promise and the deliverer moses comes to deliver god sends him and moses delivers the israelites from the hands of pharaoh and you know the story there were 10 plagues it was miraculous miraculous encounter of the lord with all the people and they come out of israel they come out of egypt the israel nation is formed they are already a big nation now that they came out of egypt they are wandering in the wilderness to reach their destination that is the promised land why people the bible scholars say probably the journey would have taken them just 11 days from kardesh barnea to canaan land but yet these people took almost 40 long years because of complaining murmuring no heart of gratitude they were having so much of unbelief their unbelief did not allow them to enter the promised land a beautiful elaborate explanation of this context is given in new testament in the book of hebrews chapter 4 that's what it says labor to enter into rest so that you enjoy the benefits the blessings the promised land that god has already provided for us so now the successor of moses joshua leads the people out of the wilderness through jericho they bring down the jericho wall and now here comes the story that i am trying to emphasize they reach the promised land the canaan land where joshua makes the allotment he divides the land into different portions to each of the sons of jacob the blessing that jacob had made in the book of genesis to all his 12 sons these blessings are being executed the promise that he had made is getting executed Joshua and Ephraimite he makes this allotment he says this particular piece of land will belong to Ephraim this will belong to Judah this will belong to Manasseh as he is making the div- division and the allotment in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse number 8 and nine god very clearly says the tribe of levi has been chosen and set apart to do the ministry work to do the work of the temple in verse 9 god said therefore 
the tribe of levi shall not have portion among the brethren because the lord shall be his inheritance amen glory to god so when joshua was dividing the allotment of the land god said levi will not have their own piece of land the tribe of levi they will be scattered among the brothers the tribe of levi will live in between the brothers all the 12 brothers surrounding the tabernacle surrounding the tent of the meeting and the tribe of levi will not have their own piece of land but be in midst of all the brothers they would be scattered wow what a beautiful meaning it has god wants to be in midst of his people amen that was his heart from beginning he wanted to be with his people and he wants to live in every one of us that is what happens when you receive jesus as your lord and savior you are giving permission you are giving your will you are giving your acceptation to god to come and to live inside of you amen so levi who were the representative of god they were ambassadors of god they were the ministers of god they were the one who were involved in the service of the tabernacle involved in the service of the temple they were scattered to live in midst of his people israel so these people didn't have their portion of land and god said they shall not have portion among the brethren why because the lord shall be their portion amen that's the benefit of serving what amazing benefit levites were chosen to serve in his temple they were chosen to serve god and god said i will be their portion i will be their inheritance maybe if raim juda benjamin has got a piece of land but for levi it is not a piece of land it for him the lord is his portion so everything that belongs to the lord belongs to levi amen what a beautiful thing what a glorious thing to have the lord as your portion to have the lord as your inheritance if you have the lord you need nothing amen so what you are saying you are saying that lord you are my portion that means i depend on you you are my source of my provision you are my source of my blessing you are my source for my future you are my source of my inheritance amen the lord shall be your portion says the word of the lord so now in the new testament what happened in the new testament if you are in christ then all blessings are yours if you are in christ today you are a priest unto the lord revelation chapter 1 verse number 6 the bible says god has made you kings and priest unto the lord amen glory and honor and praise be to him forever and ever he has made every one of you in christ as the king and the priest that means a young child who receives jesus who's born again even a young child is a king and a priest even a old man is a king and a priest a man is a king and a priest a woman is a king and a priest unto the lord so today we are priest unto the lord not in the order of levitical priesthood but in the order of melchizedek priesthood amen because we are priest unto the lord today the lord is our portion glory to god the lord is our inheritance the lord is the source of our blessing the lord is the source of our strength amen no wonder david psalm 16 verse 5 david who was not from the tribe of levi david was from the tribe of juda and david after thousands of years when he is writing the psalm psalm 16 five he says the lord is my portion and my cup the lord is my choicest portion and my cup I was wondering David is from tribe of Judah how can he say the Lord is his portion in old testament the Lord is the portion for the tribe of Levi Oh glory to God Holy Spirit taught me and I got this revelation David understood 
the grace of God. David saw God in his grace. Amen. David knew the Lord shall be his portion, whoever trusts in him, whoever believes in him, whoever is secure in him. You know why God chose the Levi to be the tribe to do ministry? You remember when Moses went to the mountains to speak to God for 40 days and 40 nights and he comes back with two tablets, the Ten Commandments. At that time, the people of Israel, they had come out of Egypt and they were used to all that idol worship and those rituals and those traditions. So they came to wilderness and they started doing the same thing. They made a golden calf and all of the Israel lights were dancing around the golden calf. Every tribe was involved except the tribe of Levi. The tribe of Levi set apart and the tribe of Levi said we will not participate. We will not serve anyone. We will serve no other God but the Lord God Yahweh, Yudhevafe. We are not participating in this and that tribe set apart. So when Moses came down, he saw the tribe of Levi was aside and they were not involved in that worship and that day God said, the tribe of Levi will be set apart for the service of the Lord. I told you, church, you can never outgive God. The smallest decision you make, the smallest thing you do to honor God, he keeps record of it. Amen? And thanks to God, he keeps record of only good things. He does not keep record of bad things because he says, I have forgotten your sins. I remember your sins no more. Amen. It's not that his memory is weak, but he's willing not to remember your past. He's willing not to remember your sins. What a merciful and mighty God we serve. But when you do something good, he is willing to remember. He's keeping a record. He's creeping the chronicles so that you will know that how good our God is. You will know that God is not a debtor to any man. Glory to God. So God set this tribe aside and now David is saying the Lord is my portion though he's from the tribe of Judah because he knows that whoever trusts in God, whoever makes the Lord his portion, makes the Lord his trust, whoever makes the Lord as his God God shall be his portion. So you remember when David went to get the Ark of the Covenant, when he became the king after 13 years of struggle and fight with Saul, he finally uh, uh, comes to Jerusalem. He finally uh, sits on the throne uh, on Jer in Jerusalem, becomes the king. At that time, he, he, he goes in search of Ark of the Covenant. He's disturbed because the Ark of the Covenant is not in Israel. He goes, wages the war from Philistines. He brings back the Ark of the Covenant. When he brings the Ark of the Covenant, there was huge celebration. And David wore the ephod, a priestly garment. David was not from the tribe of Levi, yet he was willing to do the service of Levi. He was willing to do the ministerial work. Oh, glory to God. We see that in the book of Chronicles. We see that in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7. Whenever David was thinking about the temple, when he brought back the Ark of the Covenant, he would go there along with the other uh, uh, priest. He would stand outside and do what what has to be done because in the Old Testament there were strict rules and regulations that only a Levite is supposed to do certain job, certain work. Only the priest of the Lord, the priest who comes from the tribe, the priest were selected only from the tribe of Levi and they were the only people who shall carry Ark of the Covenant. If anyone touches the Ark of the Covenant would die. There were so many reasons uh, for that, as you all know, the sacrifice, the cross of the Calvary was not over. Jesus had not paid the price. Now we are in new covenant. Jesus had paid the price because of what Jesus has done. You and I 
are the priest unto the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Church, I told you, in New Covenant, the Lord is our portion. But then, what are the benefits of serving? The Lord is a portion to every believer. But the one who serves the Lord, he is expressing his faith. It is his action of faith. When he is expressing his faith, when he is expressing his trust, it is easy for that individual to receive from God. Amen? God loves everybody. God has has given blessings to everybody. God is not conditional. He is not looking, you serve me more, I bless you more. No, don't get that. God is unconditional. Before you could do anything, even before you were born, Jesus died 2000 years ago and God has already blessed you. But when you serve God, you are positioning yourself to receive from God. Let me explain deeper this part. In the story of Luke chapter 17, when Jesus healed 10 lepers, all the 10 lepers were sent to priest to be pronounced clean. All the 10 were healed as they were going on the way to go and show themselves to the priest. But one leper, the Bible says, Luke 17, 15, the one leper returns back with loud voice, praising, singing, thanking. Luke 17, 16, it says he comes and falls at the feet of Jesus and he says, Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you for what you have done. There were other nine who were healed, but they didn't come back. But the one who came back and thanked the Lord for healing, what happened? The Bible says he was made whole. What's the meaning? The leprosy is a disease that will eat up your uh, bones, it will eat up your flesh, it will eat up your organs. So the people who were healed, the leprosy stopped, the marks, the skin became clean and they went. But this man who came back and thanked the Lord, what he had lost was restored back to him. He was made whole. Why is it? That is the power of thanksgiving. That is the power of heart of gratitude. Amen. This one leper was so grateful to God. He said, I cannot go to the priest and just live my life as usual. I cannot go and just be with my family and enjoy the rest of my life. I cannot go just live my life as before. I have to go back to my God. I have to go to Jesus and thank him. The Bible says he came. I want you all to see that scripture. I will read Luke 17, 15. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Amen. Church, this is the expression of gratitude. Thankful heart. This leper, he was so excited, so overwhelmed, so happy, he could not contain it. He came to Jesus with loud voice, praising, amen, how true it is. The Bible says, we do, we do not love in words, but in action. So, what you say to God, it has to match with the action that we do. Amen. He came back. He came back praising, came back singing, came back. He gave his energy. He gave his time. He gave his gratitude. He gave his worship. He gave his honor. He fell at the feet of Jesus and he said, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So when we serve God, church, it is heart of gratitude. When you take time to give your talents, when you take time to serve God, when you take time to do the ministry work, when you take time to serve his people in his name, you are saying, God, my cup 
runs over and it is overflowing. You have blessed me so much that I cannot contain in my cup. It's overflowing to give away to others. So he came back. So that was heart of gratitude, expression of thanks. It is serving. Amen? Because he was praising. So you're praising, you're singing, you're doing ministry work. That is serving God. And because he came back, what happened? His story is mentioned as an example for thousands of years for us to learn from him. Amen? So when you serve, you are just saying, God, thank you. When you serve, you're saying, God, I am too overwhelmed with what you have done. When you serve, you're saying, God, the blessing that you have given, it should not be just with me. I am blessed to be a blessing. When you serve, you're saying, God, I shift my focus from me. I shift my focus to you. I don't focus on I, me, myself. I don't focus on my past, my present, my failures. I focus on you. What can I do for you, for all that you have done for for me. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is exactly what David did. When David became king, you know, God took him from nowhere to notoriety. He was a shepherd boy and God made him king of Israel. Amen. And David was living in a big palace built by the king of Tyre, Hiram. When he was staying in that palace, David saw the beauty of the palace. He saw that it was made out of cedars and it was so magnificent and so beautiful architecture. You know what David said in 2 Samuel chapter 7? Those of you who are writing, you can read that entire chapter. 2 Samuel chapter 7, David purposed in his heart. He told to himself, how can I live in a palace built by cedars? When the house of the Lord, the Lord's house is just a mere tent. He said, I must build a house for the Lord. Amen. I must build the temple of the Lord. So he called prophet Nathan and he said, prophet Nathan, I cannot live in this luxury and be at peace, but I want to build a temple for my God. I want to build a house for my God. I want to build something much more beautiful. I don't want God to live in tents. I don't want Ark of the Covenant to be in tents, in tabernacles. I want God to have a beautiful and magnificent place. David didn't know at the time God had a better plan. Amen. God had a better plan because God didn't want to live in houses built by men. Amen. Because God is too big. His throne is in heaven and the Bible says in the book of Acts that his feet the earth is his footstool. Heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. So big God is. And God is not just willing to be in a temple, in a building. God wants to live in his people. Amen. Glory to God. So God had a better plan. God had better idea. God had already planned to live in the hearts of humans who are willing to obey him. But still, because David wanted to serve, because David had this idea to build the house of the Lord, God said, God spoke through prophet Nathan, came and gave the voice of the Lord. Prophet Nathan confirmed, yes, David, you can go ahead and build the temple. You can make things ready, but you will not be the one building the temple. Your son Solomon will be building. And God prophesied through Nathan saying, David, while you're planning to build a house for me, while you're planning to build a magnificent place, palace for me. As you are planning to build the house of the Lord, the Lord himself shall establish a house for David forever. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 13 says that God made a Davidic covenant that day. God said, I will make your throne last forever. Your son, God was not talking about Solomon. He was talking about Jesus. Your son shall build a house for me. Amen. Your your son shall reign on, the, on this kingdom, his kingdom, that is Jesus' kingdom, through the line of David 
forever and God made this promise. How true isn't it church? Whatever service we do to God, God has better plans, God has better things, God can work without us, but God has decided to work with us. Yes, you hear me again. God can work without us, but God has decided to work with us. God has decided to work through us so that he wants you to be more blessed. You know why? The Bible says in Proverbs 11.25, those who refresh others, himself will be refreshed. So God wants you to be refreshed. God wants you to receive everything that he has provided. So when you take time to refresh others, you are getting refreshed. Oh, what a beautiful thing. So when David said, God, I want to build the temple, God would have just smiled and said, okay, David, go ahead, make things ready. So David made all the materials, all the arrangements. He got the best of the craftsman, best of the architecture, best of the wood. He was the key man behind the temple. He was the mastermind behind the Solomon's temple. He made everything ready, gave instructions to his son Solomon and he built it. Church, from this story, I saw, God spoke to me years ago, that when David was busy building the temple of the Lord, God was establishing his throne. Amen. When you are busy giving your time, your talent, your service to God, God is establishing your life. God is building your life. Amen. God, I told you, you can never outgive God. Oh, glory to God. We can never outgive God. When you come before him as an act of faith, as an act of gratitude like that leper, as an act of your trust in him, and you say, I give everything that I have. I give my time, my talent, my service, that everything that I possess, he is my maker. I belong to him. And when you give to him, oh, it's such an amazing thing that that you are the one who is more blessed because you are receiving, because you're releasing your faith. It's a corresponding action of your faith. You're so grateful to what God has done. You're so grateful that what he is doing in your life. So you are expressing your gratitude. It is so important that action is, is such an important thing. It's not just in words. We are doing it in our action. Oh, what an amazing thing. Yes, church, when we serve God, when we take time to serve his people, neuroscientists tell us whenever a person is depressed and he helps other depressed people, his healing recovery is very high. If a person has gone through some trauma, some difficulty, he has the same empathy towards the people who have gone through. If any of you have gone through divorce, has gone through bad marriage, has gone through poverty, has gone through some difficulty, make use of that broken vessel in your life to offer to the Lord. God will make a beautiful, beautiful article out of it and it will be a masterpiece design. Everyone who looks at the crack on that pot will say, I want that crack because that will be a masterpiece signature. Amen. So make use of your brokenness. Make use of your pain. Make use of your setbacks and difficulties to serve him, to serve others because that experience, that scar of yours is so essential to build someone else. That scar of yours is giving a proof to the world that our God is the healer. Amen. Because Jesus till today, the Bible says Jesus has the scar in heaven. When Jesus came to meet his disciples, he showed the wounded hands. The scar is still there. God healed him. They could not recognize. Mary Magdalene thought that Jesus was a gardener on the day of resurrection. She could not recognize his appearance. When God healed him head to toe, why the scars were left out? 
the scars were left out as a proof of his love for you the scars were left out as a proof that our god has resurrection power and he is the healer amen so today if you have a scar in your life if there was some bad thing that happened in your past do not be ashamed of that scar be a thankful to god for that scar lift up your hands and say look at my scar my god is the healer today i stand tall and say that my god has restored everything amen glory to god so here jesus served jesus served god on the cross amen so he served god on the cross and today what we see god made his name the bible says philippians 2:9 therefore therefore god exalted his name above every other name hallelujah glory to god glory to god god is not a debtor to any man so when you take your scars when you take your pain and you rather focus on yourself you take time to focus on god you take time to refresh others you take time to counsel others you take time to sing and praise god so others can sing along with you you take time to do the work of the lord for the gospel to be preached throughout the world when you take time you're shifting your focus from you to god amen you are not being self conscious you are being sun conscious you are being jesus conscious how amazing it is isn't it why should we keep rehearsing the past why should we keep thinking and worrying about tomorrow jesus said do not worry about tomorrow so why should we think about yesterday or tomorrow let's take the beautiful time the beautiful life that god has given to serve him amen glory to god no wonder apostle paul in first corinthians chapter 15 he said i work more harder than all of them he said i work more harder but it's not i it's the grace of god that is given in me he said i work more laboriously why is he working more laboriously why is he serving more because he knows what god has done in the past and what god is doing in present and what god is going to do in future amen glory to god so when you understand that our god is such a good and awesome god your heart will overflow with gratitude with thanksgiving and you will want to serve of him amen the benefits of serving to a levi today we are the priest of the lord that is the lord is your portion forever amen the lord is your inheritance the lord is your strength amen the lord is the source of your happiness amen and david when he was building the house of the lord the lord built his house what a amazing god we serve what amazing god we serve so take time to serve take time to come to god we don't come to god just because there are benefits though i said the benefits of serving we don't to come we don't come to god looking at his hand we don't look at his hands what he can give we look at his beautiful face amen we look at his beautiful face and captured by his love and as you continue to gaze his face gaze his beauty gaze his love you like moon absorb the light from the sun and you reflect the same light back to the world amen that uh, women uh, called as the sinful women in bethany when jesus was seated uh, in one of the pharisees house reclining this woman comes to jesus with her alabaster box she said i want to serve you i want to give you all what i have i want to give you my time my energy my emotions my heart i pour it at your feet jesus and she breaks the alabaster jar at the feet of jesus and she uh, cries and her tears wipe the feet of jesus she takes her long hair and wipes the feet of jesus and she's overwhelmed and she keeps kissing the feet of jesus she never knew that by doing that beautiful act of service what was she doing she was the woman who anointed son of god she is the woman who anointed jesus wow 
what an amazing God we serve. Jesus is willing to be anointed by a woman. Amen. Nobody gives honor the way Jesus gives honor to women. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. So whenever a person has served, we see his future, how God has turned it around. Amen. Church, every one of you, the moment you receive Jesus, Ephesians 1.3, all blessings are yours. The Lord is your portion. But your service is heart of gratitude. It's your thankfulness. It is an expression of your faith, action of your faith. So when you have the action of your faith, it enables you to receive from God. God has already blessed. God has already given. God is unconditional. But it is you. Now it's up to you to receive from God. So I encourage you to take time to serve. Come before him with heart of gratitude and thanksgiving and receive everything that he has for you. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you for listening to this message. We firmly believe that it was not an accident that you heard God's word today. If you were blessed by this video, kindly comment below and let us know how it has helped you. You too can be a blessing by sharing this video with someone you know. And do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as we regularly keep uploading videos. We are committed to pray for you and never forget Christ, Christ is in you. you we believe you were blessed by this message our vision is to make known the mystery of the gospel which is Christ in you you can be a blessing by partnering with Priya Abraham Ministries to share this good news to partner visit priyaabraham.org partner